Coach Luke. Because I, I started back in the day where yeah, there, there were no nicknames. And you know? I, I also use my own name. It's just like, <laughs> use my own name. It's just like, Coach Luke. We call him that. Okay, so Luke, I've got some questions to ask you first. What is your name? My name is Luke Michas. I say Marcus mm -hmm. because that's the way it's spelled. But it's definitely. <laughs> yeah. <because> Flem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's your nationality? I am South African. Okay, but okay. Uh, I'm assuming you talking about the surname. No, yeah, okay, from. let's talk about it. Uh, so my dad is Greek. Okay. Um, half Greek, half Crete, if that means anything. Um, and yeah, so that's where the Mechas <laughs> comes <Yes>. from. <laughs> okay, and um, how old are you? I am 31 now. Okay, so we knew you when you were a large little lover bee. Yo. How old were you when you started working for Target? 20, whatever the date was in 2016, that whatever age I was yes, in 2016. 2016. That's a long time. Work it out quickly, my quick maths is bad. Uh, 20 2016, and now how many years is that? Yeah. Eight years. 23, yo, I was 23 when That's I started. That's crazy. Okay, well done for getting old. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> on the day of my 30th birthday, yeah. my back like came out, I, I spun out of knee, bed, and my knees were my like... My knee pumped from that one. <laughs> Okay, one more question I've got to ask you. Uh, this is for all the ladies out there. Are you single? Woo! Yes, I am. <laughs> okay, I have to tell you guys a story. And this is like the legend of Luke. <laughs> I knew the story was going to come up. Um, thank you, Love thank that. you, thank you. Okay, you can walk past quickly. Go! <laughs> <laughs> I've got this very, very cool story that I have to tell you guys about Luke. And that's why I had to ask whether or not he was single or not. Because actually, he is a, a, quite a catch that the teachers will ask him for his number. And I know this because I got asked to give his number to a teacher at more than one school. With more than one teacher. <laughs> and probably each of those schools. <laughs> Did it happen recently this no, year? No, not recently. Okay, so it wasn't you. <laughs> I need to find out who gave my number to some teacher. Did you get another one this year? Mm. So you still got it, Luke? <laughs> still got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. So you already, you, the predators, those teacher predators are still counting on you. Mm -hmm. You know what I think it actually was? When he started working for us, his profile picture was him in a speedo because he used to do like water polo. So I'm pretty sure he was giving off those vibes, those banana ham vibes. <laughs> <laughs> banana ham. <laughs> I don't know that term. <laughs> okay, so Dan and I have this really cool idea that we want to come up with a Tumbling Tigers <laughs> calendar, okay? But every single month is one of the coaches and they have to be like naked. But like, for example, <laughs> Luke's one would be like holding a cricket bat <laughs> or two blue balls, like right there, you know? <laughs> I'm telling you, this calendar will sell out like hotcakes. Pre-order forms, click the link below. <laughs> Good thing we don't work with kids. <laughs> <laughs> That's a long time. I had an up-down life with Tigers. I'm going to tell you a story for you again. So he was here in Joburg, and he decided what normal people do, to go to Cape Town and mm. live with, her, with his girlfriend. Woohoo! Cape Town is where you go to... Die. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, yeah, it's just a very hard when you've got your network of people up here in Joburg. Joburg is like a fast-paced city. So with the way we sell, the way we talk, it's a very specific way. Cape Townians are very chilled, lackadaisical, they don't like anything new. And Tigers is this energetic, vibrant company that just want to like work, get in touch with the kids. So it's very difficult when people give you resistance to that. And I think, how long were you there for? Two years? One year? Two years? Uh, call it two years, I Two think. years. But you know, that was a long enough time. I think one month there would have been enough. If I ever go back to Cape Town, it's for a holiday. I'll, I'll be the first one to wake you up from your nightmare. Don't worry about that. Yeah. Okay, how did you get involved in Tumbling Tigers? Like, how did you become a coach? Okay, so straight out of school, I started coaching swimming and water polo at primary school and high school, Grand Park Primary, Grand Park High School more specifically. And then Alex, he was a water polo coach there, and he was involved with Tigers at the time. And... He was just starting up, became a, uh, 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 area, a manager. area manager, yes, thank you. And he said, Luke, I'm looking for coaches. You're good with children. Can you come give me a hand? I was like, cool, what is this Tumbling Tigers about and all, and all of that stuff? And 
So he told me, and I, I had noticed while I was coaching the, the little kids how to swim, that they didn't have the core stability or the strength. So you were like already identifying it. You're like, let's start from, from younger. Yeah, because I was t coaching grade one, swimming grade two, all the way up through grade seven. Um, and then I saw the six-year-olds, when they were doing like freestyle strokes and all that, their hips would move with oh, wow. with the strokes and things like that. And they Instead just, of keeping, and then mm. it's just the chest turning. Yes, mm. and they, so they didn't have that strength, even when we're doing land training, like push-ups and sit-ups and things like that. They couldn't do one kind of a... Wow. And that's obviously through no fault of the school or whatever. Um, you've got 50 kids in one pool. Like, it, you can't focus yes, on this. Yeah, no, 100%. Thing. And then Alex said, Luke, come give this and I said, cool, we can get them really young and iron out all those things. But That's when brilliant. they get to grade one, two, and three, they are okay. <laughs> <laughs> you started the sales. Um, it just shows that you have a passion for what you do. And for all of our coaches, you either love this job or it doesn't work for you. And I love being a sports coach. You love being a sports coach. He's been doing it for eight years. I've been doing it for 12 years. That just shows that you can make a profession and a career out of something that you love to do. Where passion meets purpose, there's money to be made. It's a true story. 100%. Okay. Now, we're going to jump on to chat GPT. We ask for some serious questions, and then we ask for fun questions. I hope there's something crazy in here that we can get you answering something crazy. Okay, so if you want to do, we're going to play Ching Chong Cha, best out of one. Best out of one. I win, we do fun questions, you win, we do serious questions. Okay. okay. Ching, Ching Chong Cha. Ching Chong Cha. Ah. <laughs> the one time I don't choose rock first. You know the psychology of okay, yeah. men always choose, not always, they tend to go with rock first. Yes. I don't know why. And, has to do with and women always go for scissors first. I always, you know, I know for certain, I, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I always go for paper first. <laughs> okay, so here are the fun questions. Okay, this one might be fun. Okay. If you could switch jobs with anyone else in the company for a day, who would it be and why? Anyone from the east side. No, you can say anyone. Tigers in a hole. Yeah, yeah. anyone from the east side. Because when I come here, they are always doing nothing. Sitting in these <laughs> chairs, playing on their phones. Chad is never doing anything at the laptop. <laughs> Any one of those guys. I know. That, <laughs> that might be a nice day off for you, yeah. actually. Okay, next question. What's the best piece of advice you've ever received from a co-worker or mentor? That's a hard-hitting one. I don't actually know. That's not a fucking fun question. <laughs> best piece of advice I've ever received. I can't think of anything. That means no one's got good advice. <laughs> the no. best advice I've ever received was don't go to Cape Town. You're going to hate it there. <laughs> I said that! <laughs> Oh, shame. I feel bad for you now. No, it's fine. It's like learning, we've moved on. Yeah, yeah it's fine. Curve. How long have you been back in COVID already? We're in COVID. Just you came back in COVID. Just yeah, before. Yeah, so Harvey was just years. born. Wow. Unreal. Action three. Don't make him four years. You don't uh. <laughs> Okay, next question. Add one perk or amenity to the office. What would it be? One perk or amenity? amenity. So like a freebie. Like something that you get like... A coffee station or a Coke dispensing station mm. by the can, not the gram. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. All those things are unhealthy. They are very un Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd say a free cash dispenser. Just You know what? Actually, when you walk through the front door, you have to go through a glass box. And the money, the cash spins around and you have to grab at least yeah. 50 rand. Otherwise, you can't get into the office. Yeah, that's we're cool. And you take like a tennis racket or something so you can just yes. hold it up. It would Work be smart, actually like a butterfly hard. net. Yeah, but what's your favorite office tradition or trend? What would yours be? The gala. Straight. Oh, I love that thing. Yeah. It's so much fun. It's so much fun. It's about... It's an equalizer. Mm. <laughs> like Except your team always cheats. And then, I mean... Because you know why I'm saying that? Because we <laughs> always win. It's so sad being a sore loser. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Last year of Gala ever, we're on the same team. Oh, okay. So every time you lose Since then. Once. Yes, exactly. <laughs> every time since then, he's lost. Imagine feeling that pain. Of course you're going to hate the Gala. <laughs> I love the Gala. Um, well, you're going to hate my team then. Yes. I, I hate okay, the so rules that, that chop and change. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, yeah, come my on. My favorite thing? Or oh, what about the shotgun? 
if the shotgun for the newbies is that's a pretty cool tradition. That is a cool tradition. So basically, well. every single human who works for Tumbling Tide at our end of the month meeting, you have to take a beer. Oh, I know. Mm. And you have to open it, and then you have to, <laughs> d- or you have to stab, stab it. it. You have to yeah. stab it with a knife, and then you have to shotgun. Gently, so that it doesn't go through. Yeah. Into no, your we've hand. seen some real <laughs> horror stories. The one day, uh, this one guy popped it, and instead of it like popping and then <laughs> that thing exploded on his face. <laughs> But he was fine afterwards. He still drank the drink. And who was it? Someone opened the can before yeah. they poked <laughs> the hole in it. So funny. <laughs> so <laughs> there was no pressure behind it. Oh. Um, who in the office or tiger person makes you laugh the most, and why? I think. Uh, I think Daniel. I think everyone. Daniel say, Butler. Yeah. Dude, that guy's like not even funny. <laughs> <laughs> You're always laughing at, uh, yeah, he does, he, but it's also his inappropriate, appropriate jokes. Yes, I think, okay, so he's got like a dry, good timing. (laughs) And then also what's funny is Jarrett, Coach Jarrett, he's very funny. JK. He's very funny. Especially with the kids. He's like got a good sense of humor. He makes them laugh. I love to see that. Have you seen Jarrett, like, I mean, just like out of curiosity now, but interacting, can you say Jarrett? Have you seen him interacting with kids? Maybe I've got the wrong. Yeah, you're thinking of JK. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> wow! <laughs> Pocket sand! <laughs> Over your mouth! <laughs> I've never seen your, your East Coasters interact, so that first example of yours, I'm gonna have to. Yeah, no, they're, they're hilarious. They literally <laughs> tune <laughs> each other all day. It is so much fun. Yeah. And then also, Geo is quite funny. He's very yeah. dry and awkward. Mm. But from your side, I'd say you and Jarrett are my Aww. the funnier guys. Thank you. So, Aww. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> Gold. But it's 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 Nucky and him do too many dad jokes, mm. but like fucking awkward dad jokes, like so bad. Like for example, can you smell this? No. It smells like sup dog. Uh, I was gonna say if you say up dog. <laughs> <laughs> What's up dog? <laughs> okay, so that's one of them. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Next to the dog, Devin said, this smells like wrong dog. What's yeah. wrong dog? <laughs> you just get a tear rolling down, like force a tear. <laughs> okay. Put, put some rain in the back, okay, some I sad will. music. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You just got so distracted. Now for the serious questions. <laughs> They're not so great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go, here we go. What do you find most rewarding about your role here at Tumbling Tide? That's a freaking good question. Mm, easy, easy. My most rewarding is, I'm going to give an example rather than just, when I work with children who are a little less competent or a little more on whatever. Yeah, like the developmental yeah. level's not as high as the rest. Mm, or, or more special needs, especially in schools where you've got uh, a kid that's a little bit more neurodivergent than the, the neurotypical kids. Um, one example was I had a little girl who couldn't jump really well. She couldn't do anything like that. But I mean, like, get your feet like this yes. high off the ground kind of thing. And at the beginning of the year, could, didn't really take part in many of the activities we did. She was... And, and then as we progress in throughout the year, you see the, the change and the pro- progression. And it's amazing, it's like, yeah. And then by the end of the, like, so she would take my hand while I take her hand and I help her over the, the hurdles and through the ladders and things like that. And then you grow like a bond with, with this child more than the others because you spend so much time yes. with that kid helping them through. And then at the end of the year when they can do it without holding your hand, it might be basic for the other I children. I you cried. <laughs> <laughs> and then... And then they just like. You know, it's a good feeling. Yeah, it's a really good feeling. Lyndon mm. and Krista, they used to be my favorite because, like, you a great time spending time with all these kids. And I literally used to cry at the end of every year because it's a sad feeling knowing you're never going to see these kids. They're going to grade off. And if you're not wearing a tiger shirt, they won't recognize you ever again. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's you like, it hurts. Them. Yeah, it, it hurts. It you hurts see them so in the bad. shop, they don't say hello, tiger. No, they, and they walk by and just. I know you, and you're like, and then their parents are like, oh my god, hold Why this child. Why you talking to child? <laughs> child. <laughs> Don't steal my child. So that, that's a hard hitting yes. thing, but I hear what you're saying. Seeing a child 
do what they need to do, benefit from what our program does, because that's also quite amazing. Ralph and Dan, we created the program. The program sells itself. It actually works. Yeah. That's the most incredible part about it, is that we in something that actually makes a difference in children's and adults' lives, because let me tell you, how much we work with the consistency with kids, they come home with that consistency and they become more respectful, they listen better, it's it's, it's amazing, mm, it's yes. amazing. And I'm, I feel like I'm selling the program, but I'm not. I'm actually yeah. just telling like the benefits of what it really does. 100%. Sells itself, as Sells you said. Itself. And then the mom would also send me messages and she'd be oh, like, man. X, Y, and Z, this child's name, Absolutely. has been jumping around at home and doing roles and things like this, this. Good feeling, eh? <laughs> yeah. Good feeling. Really. Oh, this is nice. Can you share a challenging situation that you faced at work in lessons um, and how you overcame it? Don't use Cape Town because we've already discussed that. Choose something else. Challenging situation. Getting hit on by teachers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I can't think of a challenging uh, I said situation. it for you. I answered that question I'm for you. I'm just so good at when I'm... <laughs> <laughs> what? There, so that's basically what he's saying is doesn't face challenging situations. He's that amazing. I, I'm the one that makes the situation challenging. Oh, <laughs> that's a spanner. Yeah, I just tuck that in there. I'm the, I, yeah, I think I make it more challenging for my coaches than anything else in a sense. But in a, like a fun a way. Great because, way, yes. Because they'll be coaching and I will be the one distracting the children and things like that. Like just and, yeah. kick them on the bum. <laughs> and cut, not hard, obviously. Yes. <laughs> it's but like, it's all a playful. It's yeah, playful. You, have, you also have to know which child you can do it to, which one you can't. Like if you go and tap the wrong child, they're going to react in a way. But I think that's quite amazing because a lot of the time I emphasize a lot on relationship building mm. and what you're saying right now, mm. it's all based on relationship. You have to know each child specifically. Yeah. And each child has a different sense of humor. Mm. You know, like yeah. we have a sense of humor that's, out there, the time I'm the same. I do focus pads, and then as they're walking away, whap, I'm the bum. <laughs> yeah. And some of them love it. They can't wait to finish the circuit. Yes. And the first thing they're doing is like, <laughs> get it, yeah. That's my bud, get yeah. it. So it is that relationship building thing. And it's mm. so amazing that you say that because I really want people to understand how half an hour with your child once a week, yeah. it doesn't seem like a lot to you, but it's a lot to us because it's that mm. consistency. It's the same time every week. Mm. And you really do get a chance to build some really amazing relationship, not only with the kids, with your own team colleagues, and even the teachers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I thought you were going to bring up the, the stripper story when you first started speaking about it. We have to talk about it now. <laughs> I wasn't even going to say it. <laughs> I know when Daniel told the story, it was because I rode a motorbike, I had a leather jacket on, and then... Okay, we'll have to, you know what, insert Daniel's interview. So Luke used to drive around on a little motorbike with a leather jacket, and he'd climb out at the school, and he arrived at the school, and I went to the school to do a check-in, and one of the teachers asked me that she was at a bachelorette party, <laughs> and she asked, is Luke maybe a stripper or something like that because you saw someone that looked very sp familiar or similar to him so that's that's the story and we still tease luke about it to this day i don't think he's moonlighting as a stripper but <laughs> <laughs> the teachers might have that fantasy of him at the school um that's probably why we get so many sign-ups at that school <laughs> Have you prioritized tasks and managed time effectively? Because what the thing is, as an area manager, he's moved now from being a coach, he now gets a percentage of, of each child that signs up to the school. He has managing queries from customers that are underneath his name. So how do you manage your time? What do you, like, how do you prioritize tasks? What do you do in a day? Let's go with that. Team break. Okay, poorly is my answer. <laughs> because <laughs> I am... Um, I have this thing where I can't do anything until it's really important. I'm exactly like that. <laughs> you know, it's like the ultimate of procrastinating. It's like a mind. But if I have a little bit of things to do, I can't really do it. But like if I have really a lot of things to do, it, I feel the pressure and yes. I'm like, let's do it. And I get everything done within an hour. 100%. But if it's like a five, if it's like two five minute tasks, it won't, I won't get do done. It. Yeah, it's the same. <laughs> same Z's, high fives. Really nice. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, so like when we do our common things like that, like say you, they're posted in the morning and I will sit there and I'll be like, I have to do this, I have to do this, <laughs> I have to do this. And then it grates at me, but it's not pressure enough 
for me to get up and go do it. <laughs> and then I'll be there at like nine o'clock. If it's small little things I can do right away, contrary to what I just said, like yes. if I get a, a, an email or a message or something. Small bites. Small bites. I have more recently started forcing myself to do it then and there. Yes. Otherwise, I also do forget about I it. Also, I'm a forgetful Nancy. I, lists are a big thing in my life, mm. you know, because yeah. otherwise the list keeps running and then it like creates more anxiety mm. because there's a list constantly going in my uh -huh. head. And so, also, you make a list and then you lose the list. <laughs> the worst is, okay, I like to remember things like in order of how I remembered them. And then you forgot the second one. Mm. And I'm and twitching, twitching the whole day <laughs> because I'm like, what was that second one? You know, I've, I've recently found out that, um, I'm not saying this is for definite, but it's a, an ADHD trait or something to do with... Listen, I know you had ADHD. I 100% have it. I even have a bit of dyslexia, and that's okay. Mm. Spell check's there for a reason. <laughs> we just let us live our lives. I can attest to that one about your dyslexia. <laughs> no, you know what the worst is for me? It's time. Mm. I can't get time right. So, like, let's say, for example, it's like 1046. I'll see a six. Mm. I'll see the four, <laughs> and then I'm like, I Six jumble. Minutes past four. Ex uh, 10 minutes past four, I would yeah, have done. Yeah. Or 16 minutes past four. I'm like, I I can't. 18.30, I think it's half past six. Dude, I mean, wait, half it past is half past six. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's half past eight. <laughs> and you know what? A lot of life, and a lot of people now are like, oh, let's um, address adult ADHD. For what? The, pro the point of ADHD and in the world is to learn how to manage it. Mm. So by the time we are where we are, we've already have uh, these coping mechanisms to manage, like us, mm. for example, waiting until the last minute yep. to feel pressure. And that's our coping mechanism. So I don't think there's actually anything wrong with mm. us. I just think each person is very individualized and having ADHD is cool, man. You get yeah. to be excitable. 100%. And I know confused. it was very difficult for you to come do this interview today. You were quite, he was pretending to be nervous, but he actually wants to be in front of the camera. <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank you very much for coming oh, all the you. way from the north. Our first northie, because he works on the north area, we more east side. And thank you very much for coming to do our interview today. I hope you had fun watching all of our questions. Got to know more about who Luke is as a person, how funny he is. <laughs> 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 Thanks guys so much. Stay tuned for Thank our next you. episode and see ya. Wouldn't want to be ya.